Hello. Today we will be talking about the Weber number. First postulated by Moritz Weber in 1931, the Weber number is a dimensionless quantity used when analyzing the interface between two fluids. It compares the inertial effects of a flow to its surface tension effects. More specifically, the number is a ratio of inertial effects represented by density times velocity squared to surface tension effects represented by surface tension divided by a characteristic length. Dimensionally, these reduce to forces divided by areas, and when these effective pressures are similar in magnitude, we observe a phenomenon of formation or breakup of drops and bubbles. Many phenomena observed in everyday life can be explained in terms of the Weber number. It may be used to determine how far a raindrop will splash and whether or not a park fountain will form a continuous stream or a mist. For example, a small indoor drinking fountain in the absence of wind will have a low Weber number and will likely take the form of a continuous stream. On the other hand, an outdoor park fountain on a windy day, which will have a larger Weber number due to the velocity of the air, will likely form a mist. In practical application, the Weber number is relevant within an approximate range of 10 to 300. And the effects can be entirely ignored when increased to higher orders of magnitude, indicating that inertia far outweighs surface tension as the dominant factor in the flow. In this case, the Reynolds number would be a much more relevant parameter. In order to better understand how the Weber number may be applied in common fluid mechanics problems, we have designed a simple experiment that shows the physical effects of different Weber numbers on fluid dynamics. In this experiment, we drop water onto a hydrophobic stainless steel plate, varying the Weber number at impact by changing the velocity, which we controlled with drop height. In the first experiment, the water hit the table with very low Weber number. As you can see, the droplet is held intact by surface tension. In the second experiment, the Weber number was higher. At this point, the inertial effects begin to outweigh the surface tension, and the water breaks into smaller droplets. In the third experiment, the Weber number was very large. This time, the droplet experiences even higher inertial effects, and the breakup is much more profound. Whether or not you want to admit it, the Weber number is relevant in everyday life. <laughs>